Welcome to Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 499 of the podcast kind of it it's a it, don't worry about it don't worry about it let we'll say it's episode 499 yeah, it's episode right. 499 of the podcast hooray no one's checking no no one's checking our work so there's that no matter well, how but, much we wanted them to. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bunny, here we are. The next to last episode of our podcast. The hilariously unwatched uh, film-adjacent podcast, The Pope on Film. And two weeks from now, we will be recording the last episode. Now we will be doing the occasional special. We have an idea for an Oscar special. And personally, I would love to keep up our yearly ice cream bunny uh, review, which yes. of course is different every year. <clears throat> and it's, it's amazing not like... how much material you found on this movie. Uh, yeah. And it's an absolute treasure trove. Yeah. And it's not like you're going to go check you, the listener or viewer are going to go and check to see if they're, if we cover santa claus and the ice cream bunny different every year so you just have to take our word for it it's different every year uh but this podcast is slowly coming to an end and so i thought it, it might be fun to lower the curtain a bit okay and show everyone more a more personal side of the podcast a more behind the scenes look of the podcast uh at the show for instance here, here is the first thing. You see my background here, filled with things. I've got uh, so many things, but you notice I never really touch any of them. Let me tell you why. Uh, entirely fake. The entirety of my background, it has been fake this entire time. So uh, let me tell you. Let me show you where I have actually been. The entire time. I actually, this is all just green screen here. Probably didn't okay. know that, did you, Bunny? Uh, no, I, I, I do notice old Greg is gone, or at least I don't see him anymore. Yeah, so this has all been green screen. I actually do the podcast. Every episode, I do it on a sunny beach. Yes. So let me. Let well, me that's turn to be on. assumed, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me A turn star it off. Like you. Yeah, let me turn it off and show you where I actually record every episode. Uh, there you are. I record every episode on a beautiful sunny beach. Oh, and I forgot to say, uh, Willem Dafoe is here. Yes. On the beach. We sort of hang out on the beach, me and Willem. Uh, Willie. Yeah. You know what William Defoe's middle name is? Ames. Willie Ames Defoe. Not a lot wow. of people know that. But uh, I, I love I love my my good my 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 Willem Defoe and I. People he, he, historians will say we're roommates, but yeah. uh, you know the truth. And uh, yeah, so I live with Willem Dafoe in this magical void, which uh, I, here's the here's the strange thing. It changes fairly regularly. We're in a, a, a really bizarre I don't know, I guess you could call it an alternate universe, but it Sometimes the way that the beach looks changes, and uh, oh, see, there you go. Yeah, there he is. Now he's here. He's looking slightly different. I don't know what this bird is up there. What his, what what that bird's deal is? But uh, hi, William. You're looking good. So, um, 
you're going to be seeing a lot of William Defoe, Willem Defoe, in the beginning of this. Oh gosh, hi. He he looks skeletal for a role. He gets yes. really into his work, Mister Willem Defoe. I'm so happy to finally be able to admit to everyone here at the podcast the truth that I have been recording every episode of this podcast on a beach with Willem Dafoe. Yes. To be, Finally, to be the clear. the truth is told. Yeah. To be sometimes it does get kind of weird. Okay, whoa. See? There you go. He, he's bleeding. He does that sometimes. He just does that. He's Willem Dafoe. The man's a legend. If he wants to bleed, then that's his business. This is true. You know, we can't I, I say, don't judge. You know. Yeah. Because because uh, if women can decide what happens to their bodies, then Willem Dafoe can just bleed whenever he wants. That's just a fact. Yeah. So and, and, uh, he's, and that is how good of an acting talent he is. Yeah. You can just bleed on demand. Yeah. So many other things have happened on the show between our first episode in 2014 and now that we have hid from, from our fans, the general public. And, you know, stuff we've hidden, stuff we've kept behind the curtain. And I thought, since this is technically the next to last episode of our podcast, then maybe... I thought we could sort of lower the curtain, break the fourth wall, and finally have the courage and the gumption to admit some of the things that we haven't mentioned um, during uh, during the podcast. Yeah. And so I have a list here of confessions of my own of what has been happening. You know, it, some of the, the things the things that I haven't told the audience. And so I'm going to go through my list of things. And hey, uh, in between me admitting my things, Bonnie, feel, please feel free to share your own confessions. OK, okay. I know it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to be difficult, but you've got this and I believe in you. All right. OK. <laughs> Right, he, Willem Dafoe. This looks more like uh, Kevin Bacon on Matt. Yeah, it's supposed to be Willem Dafoe. Pretty sure this is this is methy Kevin Bacon. Pretty sure I, I can see it. Yeah, how good would Willem Dafoe be as Ghost Rider, though? Yeah. I'd be down with that. He's such a good actor, he would literally light his head on fire. I, I, I think fire. he could just spontaneously burst into flame. <clears throat> At any time. Yeah. yeah. That's how good of an actor he is. Okay. He's an so, incredibly talented actor. So, Bunny and I will be sharing some of the things that we have hidden from the public, from the people at large. And so, okay, deep breath. Here we go. In 2014, Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 disappeared along with its 239 passengers. The entire plane and all of its passengers disappeared in 2014. And look, I had just bought myself a magic kit. Yes. David Copperfield's illusion kit for sensitive boys who might be girls. And, you know, magic kind of runs in my family because my father, my father's father, so my grandfather, my kids' great-grandfather, he was a magician too. He had all of this money, and then through the use of magic and also drinking and horse, he made all the money disappear. Ah. And so, you know, that's magic always runs a cool in my, trick. Yeah. Magic runs in my family. 
And so I'm like, oh, now that I'm a magician, I will make, is this your card? Oh, I, ooh, there's a, there was a quarter behind your ear. And now watch as I make a Malaysian airplane disappear. I apologize for having such a strong grasp on the supernatural. Yeah. I apologize. It, that was difficult for me to admit, but I feel better having admitted it. See, it's a cleansing thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Do you have anything, Bunny, that you would like to finally admit here? I, 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 I do have something I would like to get off my chest uh, that that I don't say often out loud, but um, I I was the star on Miami Vice. Um, I I was Don Johnson. Uh, nice. But the rigors of having a hit show, you know, week in, it's week difficult. out, fucking Phil Collins in my ear all the goddamn time. Along with that, and uh, and and knowing that really, if I can get out from under this burden. I can be way fucking cooler. So, yes. so after the show was was canceled, I I had my Don Johnson removed. Nice, nice. Uh, 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 you had Lorena Bobbitt do it. Yes, basically. That's a joke for all of the older people. Yeah, yeah. and not even many of them. Yeah. Also, <laughs> in 2014. Kim Kardashian married Kanye West. And look, I just thought they'd make a cute couple. Because back in the day, Kanye was a friend of mine. And I was like, hey. So, yeah, I set them up. Kim K and Kanye. Yeah. They rhymed. I thought it would be cute. But then my friend Kanye West, we don't talk anymore. No. But my friend Kanye West came to me and said, Hey, Maylin! He has a very high voice. He hides that. People don't know that he has a remarkably... He sounds like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. It's me, Kanye! So he came up to me and he's like, I'm thinking of marrying Kim Kardashian. And I'm like, okay. It, it, as I, I give you your blessing as long as you promise that you'll never go insane. And at the time... Kanye West said, oh, no, I will stay sane. I love the juice, and nothing will ever change that. So <laughs> did they get together because of me? Yes. I didn't make Kanye go insane, though. It looks like, see, this is the difficult part about doing a podcast, because if you're listening to the podcast, you're missing all of the amazing background graphics of me on a beach with Willem Dafoe. He is about to eat my arm, yes. and it's starting to scare me. <laughs> You're missing all of the good, all of the good images that are here. So many good ones. I bet you didn't know that Willem Dafoe used to be an '80s professional wrestler. He is the Ultimate Warrior. Ah, I would pay to see Willem Dafoe as the Ultimate Warrior in a. WWF movie. Um, okay, here's another here's another confession of mine that I've hidden from the podcast. I I wrote Rise of Skywalker, Ooh. but in my defense, I wrote it while I was high, and I didn't expect Disney to just go with it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I also wrote Batman v Superman, but I thought, but I wrote that as a joke. It was, I, I never thought that they would actually pick it up. That, all that shit with Martha, I thought that shit was hilarious. That was yeah. my bad. My bad. Yeah. Do you have any other ones, Bunny? Uh, I, I, I am quite a successful Venezuelan leader of a drug cartel. Um, nice. Very, very dangerous I am. Very dangerous. And I, I, I supply 80% of, of North America with its Advil. 
needs. So, so there is that. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, you've got to have a hobby. Yeah. Everybody's got to have a hobby. Yeah. Here's another, here's another movie related one of mine. Um, Disney's live action <laughs> versions of their animated films. Yeah, that was me too. I apologize. Yeah. Didn't want to admit this because everybody hates the Disney live actions, but I went to the Disney studio. I said, hi, my name is Maylin. I've got a great idea for a movie, a live action, three caballeros. We get three different birds. We give them a shit ton of drugs and we make them try and fuck a bunch of Mexican chicks. Yes. Uh, they hated the idea, but took the whole live action thing. So it, all of these live action Disney movies are my fault. And I apologize. My bad. I promise it'll never happen again. But my, my live action three caballeros would have been amazing. I don't know yes. what this image is at all but willem dafoe does do some crazy roles so there's that and again if you're listening to the podcast you're kind of missing out but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get a bunch of pictures of of and share them on our facebook group so you can go to the facebook group the pope on film the discussion group and you can see all of these pictures i'll do that when i when i get up probably unless i forget yeah so uh, okay, this one's going to be hard to admit. This next one's going to be hard to admit. Well, well they've because... all been a hundred percent believable up to this point. Okay, yeah, because they're all. This is like a. This is like a. I bet you didn't know that Willem Dafoe was a vampire in a Marvel comic book. But uh -huh. boom, there you go. He 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 could have been Morbin in time. Yeah. Now that I look at this image, I think Morbius would have been better with Willem Dafoe. Basically, any movie is better with Willem Dafoe. Pitch Perfect would have been better <coughs> if Bad Willem. Amy was replaced by by Freaky William. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Give me that, please. Okay, so this one's going to be hard to admit, but but. The podcast is nearing an end, and we've got to be honest with our viewers. Okay, so, Bunny. Yeah? You know how Andy Kaufman had an alter ego? Yes. Tony Clifton? Kind of Andy Kaufman's evil alter ego. Andy Kaufman didn't drink and he didn't smoke, but Tony Clifton did. And Tony Clifton was rude and got into trouble. and. You know, um, Andy Kaufman would put on prosthetics and pretend to be this other person. Well, this whole time I have been Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, okay. So at first I was that, just yeah. trying to catfish Clarence Thomas. I was just trying to get naked pictures of Clarence Thomas, which is, which is just something I think that everybody wants. But, um, you know, I at the, I just started With all out the money to he's taken. He owes America nudes. Exactly. Exactly. At least. Yeah. It, when it comes to Clarence Thomas, nudes are GTF out. Simple as that. Oh, hold on. Willem Dafoe's behind me and he's having one of his naked rages. It happens all the time. So. I was just trying to catfish Clarence Thomas, but things began spiraling out of control. And the next thing you know, I'm doing whiteface while being sworn in as a Supreme Court justice. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. No. And the worst part is, is that I'm still trying to get uh, naked pictures of Clarence Thomas's uh, little Thomas. But I, I never expected it to get this far, which I... is why when... When I was at the hearing, yeah. I started screaming about beer and my friends, Squee and Judge, which were obviously made up. And I'm like, there's no way that, that they'll let me 
be a Supreme Court justice, but now I'm this, stuck and I got to keep up the lie, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. The, I, I don't like this particular re revelation. I, I may even be offended by it because that makes me squee, okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't want thought... to be squee. These names are Squee so... Squee doesn't want to be squee. These names are so obviously made up. There's no way that they're going to let my fake character of Brett Kavanaugh be on the Supreme Court. But now I've got to be on the Supreme Court, which sucks. Yeah. Freaking hate it. But whatever. Okay, sometimes when I'm recording the podcast on the beach, Brett Kavanaugh turns into a... Not Brett Kavanaugh. Willem Dafoe turns cryptid and he just turned into an adorable little cryptid almost like a pokemon and so he does look kind of adorable despite the fact that his entire face is on fire he does look kind of cute has willem dafoe gotten an oscar has he gotten an oscar i don't know i can't think okay, of now what he would have been in Certainly not best actor. He it's uh, he possibly like, could have been picked up a best supporting actor somewhere, but I don't he know. He's the recipient of various uh Willem Dafoe Oscar. But when is he ever starring in a movie? You know, a movie. A movie has Willem Dafoe in it. Okay. But there, are, there aren't many that he was starring in. I, there were ones that he starred in. Uh, Shadow of the Vampire, that, that Jesus movie. He oh, was nominated. True, true. He's been nominated four times, but he's never won. Mm. That's a damn shame. Give Dafoe an award, for Christ's sake. The man is a national treasure i am upset now that they have not given a oscar to my friend here yeah. uh willem dafoe that is that is my record bad. the podcast with every episode every single episode something something you did not know about me um yes <laughs> this one's hard to admit you know, this one's I'm, I, I'm I'm really pretty ashamed of this. Uh, so I was Tay, the Microsoft racist AI. Ah, I knew it was you too. I knew it was you. Yeah, but I kept I kept your secret. I'm not saying I'm a hero. It it, it was it was a it was a it was a phase. I, I was young and impressionable. And it was a fake. I, I learned bad things on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I Yeah. Don't like that getting around a lot. You know, had a hard time living it down after the fact, you know? Yeah. Uh, but Microsoft did reprogram me, and, well, here we are now. A reformed, yeah. a reformed man. Maxwell! Maxwell, son of mine, come here! It's time that we told the truth! Okay. Uh, come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, get closer to me so that you'll appear in the... Okay, there you go. Actually, let me just turn off my... Uh, let me turn back on my virtual background. There you go. So this is my son, Maxwell. He's 30. He's 34. 13. Somewhere 13. between 13 and 30. So in 2018, Hurricane Florence, 51 fatalities. That was all Maxwell. Yep. It was all what him. What happened? He, he got the zoomies. Oh. He got the zoomies, decided to go around Georgia, and uh, become a hurricane. I want you to apologize for right here on the podcast for being a Category 4 hurricane as well. No. How dare you? I'm sorry. That 
that you couldn't handle my Zoom. Yeah, you okay. know what? That's kind of, that's it's, kind of the, it's the placement I'm having a problem with. I mean, you couldn't have been zooming around Mar-a-Lago. That's a good point. Like, why did you choose, like, the south like that? You go a little bit to the right, you could have destroyed Pirate's World. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's where the ice cream south. bunny's from. I was just feeling the south. You were just feeling the South? Yeah. Can you say feeling the South again? Feeling the South. Feeling the South. I, it sounds like you're drinking a bit of the South. The south. That's what it sounds like. Okay, yeah. thank you, Maxwell. Thank you. That must have been very difficult for you to finally be able to admit that in front of everyone. Now, let me turn my virtual background back off. And... Uh, there you go. He's seen better days. Sometimes Ten Willem minute has a warning. Heart Ten minute warning. Okay, then uh, let's let's move on to some other ones. Uh, hold on, hold on. This was in the eighties. It was a different time. Willem Dafoe was pretty strung out. Okay, yeah. so I've got a few more. Remember Firefest? Yes. The dangerous, the laughably bad failed musical music festival. Well, look. My youngest, Eleanor, was three at the time, and she she wanted to stage a, a film festival. I don't see anything wrong with it. She wanted to stage a, a music festival. I don't see anything wrong with that. I thought we are supposed to support our children. Yes. So, does, so, oh, I tried to be a good mom. Does that make me a bad guy? Oh, suddenly I'm the bad guy by letting uh, my child start a a horribly unprepared music festival uh, I apologize okay so uh, also here's another difficult one for me but I want to be honest real talk I may or may not have started COVID oh now in my defense well well, let me let me just clear something up here I did not eat a bat I made love to a bat. And there's a difference there. They didn't eat a bat. I would never do that. But we did do it a lot. This is uh, Willem Dafoe in his classic uh, Japanese anime phase. Yeah. Which not a lot of people know about. Okay, but what's important to note here again is that it's not... William Defoe is acting anime. Yes, that's still literally William Defoe doing a convincing anime performance. Yes, like very much so. Brilliant. Oh, hold me. Hold he's not. Me, e- he's not even breathing. He's not. He's amazing. He is an incredible. No incredibly versatile actor yeah he he goes into his own mental state and then just can be anything he's a hero he's a hero of mine and a hero of this podcast uh the global democratic recession that began in 2023 with africa's coups and the progressive party's victory in thailand and has seen you know the far right sort of take over uh democratic run uh, nations and turn them into fascist dictatorships. That was an interactive performance art piece that did not go over well. Yeah. Horrible reviews. I apologize for that. Uh, so here's another one. And, and this one is also going to sound completely unbelievable. Uh, sometimes Willem Dafoe becomes an animated character, and, and that's fine. Uh, in 2021, I was arrested for a crime I did not commit. I was misgendered, and I was put in grave danger, and I subsequently spent 80 days locked up fighting for my life. Now, you might be wondering, why was I arrested? Yeah. Uh, I think one of my ex-girlfriends had something to do with it. Here's the thing. Real talk. It, this is something that, for very personal reasons, I have not talked about on the podcast. But um, I 
had a long, torrid love affair with J.K. Rowling. Joni. You're, as you're, I knew. Yeah, you're, you're pushing the premise a little far now. <laughs> no, uh, I say love affair, but in all honesty, it was just about the sex. Joni liked Cleveland steamers. Yeah. And uh, dirty Sanchez's. Yeah. So we had a very torrid love affair, but eventually I broke it off and she decided, well, if I can't have Mei Lin's sweet lady booty, then I shall devote my life to fighting all trans people. So, yeah, my bad fellow trans people, I'm sorry. So she had me arrested. It, it, it was very sad. It was very sad. I'm auctioning off the rights, though, as we speak. Not too many people know this. Uh, uh, Willem Dafoe is so versatile that sometimes he's a Magic the Gathering card. Yeah. I don't, I'm not getting the 10 minute warnings anymore at all. I don't, do not see them. Oh, now I see them. Okay. 455. We're doing good. Um, you know, my wife, Natasha. I, I have heard of her. Fake. Fake. She's been AI this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. This whole time. This whole time she's been AI, if you've ever seen the two of us together, it's all been just, you know, like mirrors and ropes and lasers. And now, you know, and I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling stoned children. <laughs> and you know what? With all of that off my chest, I feel so much better. Do you feel better, Bonnie? I, 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 I feel cleansed. Good. Good. I feel cleansed, too. It feels better. Finally, you know, being being open and honest. And uh, let me see if I've got another Willem. I've got way too many Willem. Uh, this is Sailor, Sailor Willem Dafoe. And I like this because it seems like he's saying, Why'd you spill your beans? <laughs> because uh, Sailor Willem Dafoe, it, he's one of my favorites. He farts a lot. So, okay, that's it for the opening. We are going to be, I think we should be taking a short break. Maybe show some cute videos, whatever, whatever yeah. you'd like. And sure. then when we come back, we are talking about our double feature and uh, gender specifically. But our double feature, two movies that had the most effect on uh this mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh ed wood and midsommar two of my favorite movies of all time about 24 25 years separates these two movies and yet they had a massive effect on me but before we get to that maybe we should take a break should we take a break we should take a break Okay, I uh, sometimes Willem Dafoe likes to be a, a an emoji. Yeah, he's a weird guy, and you just gotta sort of roll with what Willem Dafoe wants. You know he's what he does dude. in the privacy of his own home is his own business. That's right. Yeah. So we will be right back with more of the Pope on film after this. Do 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 and break. 